got it. Okay, there we go. I can hear you now. You can hear me? Yeah, how you doing, Tom? Ooh, I'm good. Let's get the video going here. Hold on. Okay, take your time. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm trying this background. What do you think? I never, I never used this before. <laughs> You're fine. It looks very tropical, like we're in the... <laughs> So you're Stephen, what's the last name? Wade, W-A-D. That's right, I have a nice song for you. Stephen Wade, Stephen <laughs> Wade. How old are you? You're so young, I love it. You're going to be surprised. Um, I'm actually 30. You look fantastic. And where are you? Where am I talking to you from? Um, I'm, I'm currently residing in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Beautiful. I'm originally from New York, so right, you're back right. east right now. <laughs> so you're having a, is it a hot, humid summer right now? Very, very is. We're experiencing our fourth heat wave right now. <laughs> yeah, we were in New York a couple of weeks ago, and right, uh, yeah. we, went, we went to a wedding in New Jersey, and boy, it was like 90, 95 humidity. Stephen Wade, there he is, right there, legend. <laughs> so how, well, I did how, some research on you. You know, you've interviewed everyone we know, Dorothy <laughs> Vaughn, who I love dearly, and yeah. uh, <laughs> Robert Bob Klein, who is yeah. a legend, and Michael Sorridge, buddy. <laughs> That's great. This is kind of weird. I've never done this before. Can you? Yeah, you like you know you know those guys for like decades, man. That, it's amazing yeah. that you're still friends with these guys, and they're very very entertaining and funny too. <laughs> they're great. <laughs> they're great people. I want to make sure you see my whole face here. Get your money's worth. There, I'll stay. If I don't move, <laughs> you're <good>. fine. <laughs> I won't move right here. What's that weird? Look at that indent right there. What is that? Oh, what where that is? Oh, that's Something's that's going. the like the virtual background. You it does that when you put like a. You know the virtual background behind you. The I don't want to look virtual. I want to look like a real person. <laughs> you look real. Ask away. I, I looked at your your uh, wonderful questions. I looked them over just briefly. I want to leave it spontaneous. So when you ask me, you can yeah. ask me whatever you want, and we'll go from there. Okay. Before I start with the questions, how how, how has been your summer so far? Because I know great, you and Dorothy been so over, like all over the place, and you know. Yeah. Well, they're calling this summer. Uh, um, revenge travel uh <laughs> we've been invited to two anime conventions and i'm not kidding you five weddings <laughs> and we've gone to the two anime conventions and four weddings there's one more coming up but dorothy won't go she's yeah. wedding out she can't do it so <laughs> understand yeah it's just like i'm just understanding i'm glad to see you both like going out seeing the fans you know y'all we're trying so busy, we've so been busy. very we've been very safe very Thank safe God. and Thank we, God. we haven't knock wood we have not gotten covid at all but we know so many who have and uh it's tough and i'm going to a party later today for a friend's birthday and i just hope everyone's vaxxed and boosted and you know i'm just going yeah. with it and and we still wear our mask when we go to the stores in Los Angeles. We noticed in New Jersey and New York, people not really wearing, they're kind of over it. They're like, ah, yeah, I'm they're with it. Yeah, they're very hard headed in the East Coast. So like even I'm triple vast and I've been so fortunate so far not to catch it. So I just gotta yeah. be careful when I wear my mask or when I'm yeah. in big crowds because. Yeah, well in big crowds, we still wear it. And when we go to the store, we, we still wear it. When we're outside, Mm -hmm. uh, we take it off unless right. we're around a lot of people. You know? So we try and be very smart about it. I'm, right, right, exactly. I just don't want to get it. And I have a 85 year old mother and a 95 year old mother in law. So we're around them, and we want to. So yeah, it's oh, been a good summer. Yeah. yeah. How was I mean, your summer in Philadelphia, young man? Oh, it was good. It just, it's just been a lot of heat waves this year, and I never, you know, I've been to Ocean City, New Jersey, just to go into the beach and whatnot, and it, it, it cooled me down, so, you know. Anywhere by the beach is always nice, even just being yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And you, you've been an anime fan your whole life. You can say that. Um, You know, Digimon was one of the first anime shows. I didn't even know it was an anime to begin with, like most other kids back in the day. But until I Right, right. Anime. I don't really have any Digimon memorabilia or anything, you know, nothing that I can really <laughs> show you right now. I mean, you know. It's kind of fun how it fades in and out there. Yeah. Go ahead, ask away. I'm ready. Okay. So when did you discover the passion for acting or the the essential art of performing? You know, like oh, you, like you want to play pretend for a living. I grew up in New York and uh, my dad was a drummer, a jazz drummer. So mm -hmm. when he would play like a little gig around town at a park or something, Hexha Park in Huntington, uh, 
we would then come on the stage. Me and I have two brothers and a sister. We'd take the stage to help him be his like drum crew, like, you know, carry the stuff off. But then I turn around and went, Ooh, I think I like being on the stage, you know? And then we'd go to Broadway. They took us to Broadway shows and it's just, you see what's going on. And <clears throat> I was like, I want to be part of that. I want to be part of that. You know, and then I equated it. I've said this before. I, I I equated it with television as well. I thought television, the movies and the TV shows and the Tonight Show and Bugs Bunny and everything was like some party. I thought there was like a party going on. And it's coming from the television. So how do I get to be part of that party? So I wanted to be an actor when I was very young and did the school plays, whatever I was cast in and went from there. So it happened when I was young. Yeah. Yeah, so like, did um, did you you know like after you found that passion, like, did it carry over to you going to college? And did and yeah. when you went to college, I was trying to figure that one out. Yeah, so my there. my family moved from uh, Huntington, Long Island, New York, to uh, basically Huntington Beach, Southern California oh, in okay. 1977 that makes before you were born. And I went to college at Cal State Long Beach. I was a theater arts major, and I met a young lady named Dorothy and Elias there. She's a very lovely brunette, yeah. I'm still following her around, yeah. <laughs> so how did, how did that mean it came and how did you two fell in love at the all those years, you know? <laughs> we, uh, we were freshmen in college and you know, theater arts people are uh, very outgoing. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. actors are crazy. They're goofy, they're funny, they're silly. And they found like their tribe, like they found their, I encourage anyone to do something in the theater. You don't even have to act, be on the crew, yeah. be in the lighting or the sets or the costume because it's you're all putting something on together. You're gonna see something through and you bond with everyone. You become almost like a family, you know? And right. so the theater is like that. So when you're a theater major in college, you're uh, you're around uh, kindred spirits. Like everyone mm -hmm. wants the same thing. Right, so I right. met Dorothy in the middle of that. We were cast in a scene together. Right. And, you know, I'm 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 basically Schlubby, the character actor. I'm not a leading man. I'm no Brad Pitt here. You know, I'm you know I'm, look at me. I'm, you know, I mean, I'm a character. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, I was cast in a scene with Dorothy, and we were the male lead and the female lead, and we had to like you oh. know kiss at the end of the scene like a <laughs> stage kit you know a little like a little smooch you know and uh i had never done that ever so um but i liked her immediately and but it took me a while to ask her out i'm you know Aww. fraidy cat you know chicken yeah uh, it, it, it gets it gets to that point where you when you see the one you know you feel like you might ruin it you know it's like you just gotta take that major step which you well you gotta go. take you gotta take a risk but i used to, yeah. I used to talk to dorothy i used to say to dorothy we should do this or we should go that we should go to this movie or we should go to this concert i would just like like small talk bs and she'd go yeah okay when <laughs> so you know like a like a uh, like a smart per like a smart person she called she cornered me and she gave me her number <laughs> and it's gone from there yeah our our first date was like 1981. You were not born yet, and right. we got married. We got married in '85. So, but it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And then she also Dorothy told me this that it's because of Dan Lorge that you guys met each other. Dan Lorge, I can't believe you know him. So Dan Lorge went to Cal State Long Beach with us, and he's one of my best friends to this day. And I did stand up with him for about 12 years. I can we see were known that. as Tom and Dan. <laughs> and we won ten thousand dollars on America's Funniest People. Oh, if you, that's if nice. you remember that show, we were doing a mm -hmm. Al Pacino on a game show. Hoo ha! Hi ho! Hee haw! We yes. gotta post those. <laughs> we have to post those on uh, YouTube. I can't believe we haven't. But yeah, Dan Leger, and then we all got into VO together. I'll tell you all about that. And Dan, you know, was, I, I I helped him any way I could. He helped me, and yeah. now he lives in Reno. Right. Uh, but he still <laughs> performs. He does like a Johnny Cash. Ooh, he does like a Johnny Cash routine, you know, like Ring of Fire. He sings like as Johnny. <laughs> He's a great impressionist and a great actor yeah. and, a, and a great friend. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. He was that. he was on one of the shows that you mentioned that I don't remember being on Flint, the Time Detective. Yeah. I remember working for Michael Sorich on that. Yeah, but I don't remember what I did on it. But I think Dan was one of the mm -hmm. leads on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was one of the one of the major characters. If Before you ever I, want to talk to Dan, uh, I can <laughs> hook you guys up because he worked yeah. pretty steady all through the uh, 
the nine, 1990s and then into the 2000s and then right. he moved mm-hmm. to Reno. Yeah. So, but he had a nice little anime career there. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. He is. It is. He's very prophetic. And I'll keep mixing his voice because he sounds so similar to Bob Pappenbrook because they tend to play those hammy characters. Those characters. Right. Right. Bob Pappenbrook. Rest in yeah. peace. He was. He yeah. was a character. <laughs> He had a real low for hey Tommy. How's it going? <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly that. Steven, Steven Wade, yeah, he's a good guy, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> well, his son, uh, B- uh, Bryce, is a big, is big now, big voice over. Right, right. Oh yeah. man, like yeah. father, like son. <laughs> great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when did like when um your brother John and your sister Melissa did they found their own passion for acting too, or it was just the whole family love? <laughs> Love well, let's start with the beginning. I have an older brother named Michael, who's Michael, not an right. actor, but he's a working jazz musician. Okay. And he's mm-hmm. on his way right now to Charlotte, North Carolina, to work with some band. But he's a wonderful oh, wow. trombone player. He plays the valve trombone and the slide trombone. He's a wonderful. And he's married to Marianne McSweeney, who's a bass player. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and she plays in all the Broadway shows. She's about to appear in Some Like It Hot on, on Broadway, the musical. So my older brother, he went the music route. Then there's me. There's my brother, Jonathan, who's a wonderful actor. And his mm-hmm. wife's a wonderful actress, Jenny. And Jenny, my sister, Jenny Melissa, Thomas. is a wonderful actress. And her husband is a wonderful drummer. Um, we all kind of got into it uh, because of a wonderful guy named Victor Garcia. I have to get right. credit. Mm-hmm. I was working in post-production. I've told this before in the late 80s with Victor and a guy named Steve. I'll just leave it at that. And Vic, I was, we were all working for Victor in the mailroom for Empire Films. And we had to run errands around Hollywood, me and this funny guy, Steve. And whenever Steve and I would see each other, we'd become like two Jewish old men. Hello, Steve. Hello, Tom. How are you? How are you? And we were like 20 or, you know, like we're just being like goofs, you know. Mm-hmm. So a couple of years <laughs> later, Victor Garcia called me and he called this guy, Steve. And he said, I'm now, I'm not working for Empire Films anymore. I'm now producing this new thing called Japanimation. Do you guys know what that is? And I'm like, I have no idea. He's like, (laughs) these Japanese cartoons that are being dubbed into English and they need actors. So I'm producing it. So I want you and get your wife, Dorothy, get Jonathan, get Melissa. He knew that we were all actors. Melissa had a nice little voiceover career before Mm -hmm. this. She was the voice of Betty Boop on this uh, Betty Boop Hollywood mystery thing, or it was wonderful. So she got was going right before us, but I was doing uh, Walla and looping before I got into anime. Um, and then you do as much as you can, you know, you don't say no to anything. Right. Uh, but right. this, but what I wanted to say, the punchline here is this guy Steve was Steve Bloom. Yeah, yeah. So um, Steve Bloom before he, you know. It was, so we we all did our verse, our first anime together you know so he's still the nicest guy in the business yeah so just... he he's so grateful for what he has done and all the people like you guys that it's a good thing that you guys are still friends after all these years have y'all career blossom to many different paths i mean acting is very fruitful for sure it's, it's definitely a creative art for sure and it's i'm a glad creative that art I... and also it's like any business it could mm-hmm. be the plumbing business it could be any business it's all who you know Right. And you mm-hmm. want to treat people nicely, you know, because mm-hmm. if you, the way you treat people, I always feel it's the way you'll get treated. What you give, you get back, you know? Mm-hmm. And so there's noises out in the street here. Just ignore it. Um, but yeah, I mean, so yeah, show be entertaining. I've tried to just, you know, try and be as nice to everyone. And you never know where you're going to get a break along the way. Victor Garcia, he was just my boss. Yeah. And then he ends up producing anime. So then I worked on The Giver. We got in on The Giver. And we got in on Macros and Orgus. Now, those were like the first three in the mm-hmm. early 90s. Yeah. Right. And that and that brings you back to meeting with uh, Kevin Seymour, right? Okay. Kevin Seymour, rest in peace. He needs a yeah. lot of credit. Kevin Seymour, uh, he loved this stuff. And he, yeah, he did. passed us all and he directed us. And uh, he was wonderful. Kevin Seymour was wonderful. He was really the brains of... Uh, a lot of oh, things. Yeah. Uh, what was the uh, you have like Magnitude Animate. Eight? A- Magnitude Eight was where we recorded, okay. and his production company was called Animes. Animes, yeah. And I still right. remember his voiceover, his voicemail. You, <laughs> you have reached Animes. Please leave a message. He had he, he had the voice on it, like some Indian thing. And he was <laughs> Kevin Seymour was secretly very funny and entertaining on his own. You know, right, right. Is it? It's like it's just amazing. Like for for a guy like him, you know. 
And what I like what he does when he casts you guys in so many productions, he tend to let allow you guys to use your natural voice instead of putting on a character voice. Like your role as show from Guyver, <laughs> that's still one of my favorite roles you have done in your career because it's so very authentic and very real. And you know, I was about twenty. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I was. 30, just 30 then. Mm -hmm. And uh, they wanted me to be that young voice. And, you know, I think some of the weird thing that I think Melissa is my love interest in that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That, that was weird. Sister, so I'm like looking you know, through the yeah. credits, I see. That was just the casting. They were like, we have to do this. And I'm like, whatever, you know, we never recorded <laughs> right. it's for together, time. you know. But, they, you know, in the beginning there, they had to work some things out. I think they, they used us a lot on everything until they realized mm -hmm. that we're in Los Angeles and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of other actors. So eventually... At Magnitude 8, they had a nice pool table there. I started seeing a lot yeah. of people I never saw before around the pool table. So it was a little secret, Macros, Orgus, the Guyver, that we were all working on. And we're so happy to have work and Dan Leger and Steve Bloom and whoever else was in on it, Debbie Rogers and a lot of other great people, David Hart, this British guy. And then we started seeing some other people. I believe Brian Cranston was out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah he was there around that time too. Right, yeah. And like a lot of Michael, like I met Michael Sorich there. Yeah, uh, I met Michael um, Storage because I was in a I was in a what they call a, a Walla group. You know what a Walla group is? Right. When all the actors do like background noises and sound. Background and voices. Yeah. Because uh, I'll, I'll give you a little film history. Back in the 20s and 30s, sure. sound came in in 1927. And when they wanted to have a scene where like the two actors are at the bar and they're yeah. talking, they have the dialogue but the bar is full they would tell all the people in the background the extras they would say just say walla 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 yeah so, but then what we do now is we actually give voice to the people in the background we improv and they do it on anime too the, the, mm -hmm. the crowds and all so i had to do a walla session it was me dorothy and michael sorich and i never met michael sorich before and he's a big wonderful warm greek tommy you know, <laughs> we we're in a little room together and it couldn't have been more fun you know i mean you got to have fun when you're doing this oh uh, it's absolutely absolutely and that and that's how you met um r martin Klein, Bob Klein, right? Because I know you're very close with that with that guy. Bobby <laughs> Klein. I think I was with Bob Klein on his first vo voiceover session. Mm. I think the first voiceover session he ever did was me and Jonathan and Dorothy and Bob Klein, and we were directed by Dave Mallow. And Honey. I forgot what it was for. Honey Bee Bob Hutch. Knows. Is it Honey Bee Hutch? Yes, it was Honey Bee Hutch. And. Uh, <laughs> Bob Klein does amazing impressions of very obscure people that really crack me up. Like Paul Williams, <laughs> the, the composer, Paul Williams. It's a little bit funny. I mean, I don't do, I do Bob Klein's impressions. But Bob Klein was on Broadway in Annie. I yeah, mean, he's mm -hmm. a, he's a, back you know, in New York. Yeah, A lot of these people are not just uh, voiceover actors. They're, mm -hmm. they're wonderful actors, you know. So, yeah, because yeah. they have like a strong musical theater background and that yeah. all that training transitions so well into voiceover that yeah, yeah, it yeah, makes yeah. the act them, act them yeah. more, more alive, more real. Like you could tell that. You're very good. Acting. You're, you're, you're very good. Are you an actor at all or have you ever well, taken an acting well, class or anything? I studied martial arts, so that's another form of art. Yeah. So, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is kind but of I, hard. You can I, go I, I respect the whole acting process because you know the discipline. It's it's yeah, it, they're both similar. They both have discipline. You definitely gotta work hard. It's well, I, I know we're jumping around here, but you just mentioned martial arts, and that makes me think of Bruce Lee. And that makes me think of my one episode on Cowboy Bebop. I don't know if you <laughs> I, I'm on episode eight yeah. play Rocco Bonari. And I have, I don't want to give a spoiler away, but I might as well. <laughs> I have a great death scene near the end. But yeah, like, the whole thing, I'm trying to tell Steve Bloom. Isn't it funny? Steve Bloom's on it. Um, and we started together years before Cowboy Viva. But he's he's trying to tell me to calm down. I play this very hyper guy, Rocco. <laughs> he's like crazy. And and Steve Bloom is saying, be, be water, my friend. Be water. He, he's using Bruce Lee uh, philosophy to keep me calm, you know. But anyway, right? <laughs> no, yeah, I I've seen Cowboy Bebop so many times, and not only did I just see the main cast, I like to see other actors be involved. Like like you, sir, you did you did a couple of roles. I think I was. I know. I know. I remember Rocco on episode mm -hmm. eight. There's yeah, so yeah, many like, people. Yeah, and I might have played some other miscellaneous because Mary Elizabeth was the director, and she knew us all from Digimon. Right. So she right. would, you know, it's 
it's like any business. You, you, you call who you know, and and you know, we're just I'm grateful for the work, man. I'm grateful for it. I mean, same, same. And judge it, jumping from animes, when did you yeah. get in contact with uh Saban Entertainment? Was it through Michael Storage? When did you yeah, well, they you start working for whoever magnitude eight and then other people get it direct i think wendy lee was the original director on digimon for saban right. so then she requested certain people to come read and so that's how i read for digimon and agumon and saban and then uh scott page pactor power rangers who, who just passed away yeah. and may he rest in peace he was one scott page pactor let's give him his moment yes. here he yes. was a wonderful yes. director and a wonderful actor and writer and, and a wonderful musician too. And he was the director for Power Rangers and uh, that was Saban. And we also recorded Digimon in the Saban building on Wilshire. So we're doing a lot of Saban work. But the great thing about working on Power Rangers was uh, if I'm doing a voice on it, uh, my characters are always wearing a mask. Right. So I never had to worry about syncing. You know, I'm sure all your audience knows that when you dub, you're, 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 you're dubbing the mouth of the mm -hmm. animated character, but with the masks of, of uh, Power Rangers, I didn't have to worry about it. But I'll get back to Dan Lerger. The, the most memorable Power Rangers that I remember being on, and maybe some of your fans know, and this is a long time ago, but you yeah. can look it up. Scott wanted me and Dan Lerger, because we were together, we're good buddies and stand-up comedy together. We, he wanted us to play these two uh, bad guys who were kind of idiots, like, hey, yeah. you know, and he's like, but do something funny with it. So I did it as Stallone, and Dan did his as Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I'm like, hey, come on, come on, you Power Rangers, what are you doing? I think hey, I, know what, I know I think you know what you're talking about, too. Hey, you're in Philadelphia, huh? Come on, come on <laughs> Power Ranger. And Dan's like, you Power Rangers, I will be back, you know, so we were... <laughs> We sticked it up. We did all that. And it's it's very funny. Also, years later, Scott Page Pactor was the head of Mattel Toys in El Segundo casting for, and I, and he would always call me in. I had to walk by about a thousand Barbie dolls to get to his, because it was literally the Mattel factory. And uh, he was in charge of any voiceover. And I did a commercial for him. And I also ended up doing uh, a toy the voice of a toy it was called loops l-o-o-p-z and it's like this thing where you put your hand and you hear lo 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 loops loops and you do these like things and you hear hey what's going on it's my voice but it's all uh hand sound wave uh that gets it going anyway right, i did right. this i did the voice of this toy but all for scott <laughs> scott page packer rest in peace man because i know you like you voice like very Different various monsters, like you play like some kind of vampire monster in Power Rangers one time. <laughs> it's it's so many things you did for for Saban Entertainment with Scott, with a director like Scott Page Pactor. I'm glad he allowed you guys to have the much fun you had with these. Characters. Well, he he, he oh. knew he knew what everyone could do, and yeah. he would cast you accordingly. And then he just you know they say 99% of it is the casting, and then you get out of the way. You let the actor do. What you know they can do you know right so you know yeah i've played a lot of uh, maniacs over the years I've, <laughs> I've somebody asked me at a convention i was on a jojo jojo's uh bizarre's adventure man i was like a psycho yeah some crazy yeah mm -hmm. yeah you were that was you yeah crazy I'm, I'm over like, the top and when the when you know when that session is done i'm tired i'm like sweaty <laughs> i got a headache right, i need right. to eat lunch oh my god boy it's crazy so yeah. fans i'm giving you the best i can okay <laughs> It yeah, looks like so, I'm on the beach somewhere. I'm really not. It's kind of funny. Yeah, jumping around within the Samba Entertainment era. Yeah. Yeah, you worked on this show called Flint the Time Detective. Michael Storch yeah. was directing. This is like one of the times where Bob Klein had a lead role along with uh, Bob Pappenbrook, Brian Donovan, all those other guys. Like yeah. a, lot, a lot of actors was on there. Jeff Nimoy, he did like a Regis right. depression Jeff, on there. Yeah, Jeff Nimoy is an old friend of mine. He's a great director and a great actor. and and we want to try and do some Digimon conventions together. I mean, would you right. go to a, hey, is there a big convention in Philadelphia? There must be, right? Yeah, it's like, um, there's one, there's a there's a convention center in downtown Philadelphia. So they do like other conventions and anime conventions around. The, well, around Dorothy the is the, Dorothy is the brains and the looks of this operation. Yeah. So she, <laughs> right now they're, 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 uh, they're casting the conventions or that's not the right word. They're, they're putting the conventions together for next year. 
now. So we're, we're hoping to get back east a little bit more. And we'd like to do a little bit more Digimon since everyone's right, so excited. Right. I'd, love we, to do, I'd love to do one with Dorothy, Jeff Nimoy. Mary. <clears throat> maybe Colette, excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Joshua Seth. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Ty, Ty. Wouldn't you go see Ty and Agumon together? I mean, wouldn't you, <laughs> wouldn't you, go, wouldn't you go see that? <laughs> would you? Uh, yeah, I, I, I would definitely would. And, and speaking of now, we were talking about Agumon. How did how did you get hit with it? I know Wendy Lee, Michael Storage asked you like Tom Reef for this part. I know you'd be good for it. Audition for this was, character called Agumon. It was what just was your so, first impression on it. It's just so so uh, unexpected. It was just mm -hmm. another audition, uh, Stephen. You go to the yeah. Saban Building, and I I don't think anyone told me to read for Agumon. They said read for three parts. And okay. you pick the three parts you want, I think, unless they did tell me to read for that. And it was all laid out of the script. They call it the copy. Right. So it was all laid out. And, and what I love and what a lot of actors love is they have a drawing of the character because I, that really helps. You start to make choices on what you want them to sound like, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so I saw this little yellow dinosaur and I read for a couple other parts, too. And I just saw this little guy and I just in my mind, I'm thinking, well, he's he's a cute little guy. I mean, he looks kind of sweet. He's like, hey, 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 he's kind of a kind of a sweet guy. Hey. You know, I, I just went for kind of a sweet thing and I ended up getting it. And now we're still talking about it years later. And I played all the parts and I've done toys and it's beyond right. belief. But the funny thing is, if you listen to the original Japanese, the guy yeah. who the guy who does it is this boy. Yeah, it's very he's down throaty, here, like a throaty Danny yeah. DeVito. Like, blah, 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 blah. So. What I like is that they didn't go, sometimes you go to a gig and they go, we want you to sound like the Japanese right? or the Korean or the French, whatever the dub mm -hmm. is. But on this one, they, they, they liked what I did and, and we went from there. And Wendy Lee was the director and then I believe Sorich and then Jeff Nimoy was the director. Mary Elizabeth was the director. Paul I'm DeFranco, sure. yeah. who was a producer on it, he was the director on some of it. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and then we did the Digimon Try movies uh, re yeah. recently. Did you watch any of those? Oh yeah, I, I got. Um, did you um, watch the last one? Yeah, I got the last one. Give me one second. They got one of them. Look at that! I just signed that at a convention. <laughs> like, that's so fun. Yeah, well, I, you know, I'm amazed that you guys. I'm amazed that you even want to talk to me. So if you want to know the truth. Yeah, but, because know. with Digimon, not only you did Agumon, but you did, you did so many other character roles too. Like this is one of the times where Jeff, Michael, Mary Elizabeth, actually, hey, Tom, read for this part. I know you're good for this part. Or here are these couple of characters. Choose the three that you think is best for you to perform. So like when you've been doing Agumon for a couple of years, there's other times, not around the same time you were doing Agumon back, back in the day, you were doing like other side characters like uh, Divermon, Haguru, Har Haru, Garurumon, something. Right. Like Everyone that. tells me I did those. I don't remember a lot of those, but that that's that was really fun though. I, yeah. I will say this: it's fun to it's fun to do Agamon, and then it's fun to do something else. Yeah. You know, within the same we series, would, we would do like you just said. We would do I would do Agamon, and then I would play a couple of other smaller parts that had like a couple of lines, and then we do Walla. Right. In the background, the crowd. But the funnest thing, and I've said this before, is when Mary Elizabeth asked Dorothy and I to right. play ba Baba Mon and Gigi, Gigi Mon, the little Billy old Crystal couple. Carrie Kane. Right, that's right. There you go. Look at you know the whole thing. <laughs> I love you so much. You know, <laughs> kind of like that Steve Bloom, Billy Crystal old man that we used to oh, do. Oh man, you but, guys... yeah, that's one of my favorite things because I got to do that with Dorothy. Yeah, with Dorothy because and Mary choose you to specifically yeah. for those two yeah. roles. Like here, here's an old married couple, you know. <laughs> right. Well, she, and she knew that we knew the the Billy Crystal and the Princess Bride references. Right. Right. She's a funny lady. I mean, you know the yeah, she's the best directors are. The best oh, directors don't have to be actors, but Wendy and Jeff Nimoy and Mary Elizabeth and Michael Source, they're all actors, you know, Richard yeah. Epcar, hey buddy, they're all actors. So, you know, they know how to communicate right. what you need, you know, but it's a definite skill to be a director. I don't, I don't think, I think I'd be too easy. I think I'd be too, uh, yeah, that <laughs> sounds good. 
let's keep going. Yeah. I mean, you, and you've got to work <laughs> a little bit harder, you know? I like just being on the acting side, you know? Right. There's like a lot of veteran actors like yourself. They've been doing it for decades, but they prefer just doing the acting part instead of the yeah. directing or the script and writing and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. I like to just, you know, you asked me, I think, uh, I hope I'm not jumping the gun, uh, how I come up with stuff. You know, we don't see anything until mm -hmm. we go to the session. So right. sometimes like... You do like a cold uh, read? I just work I just worked on something for Wendy Lee. Yeah, you did. It, it just came out today. I mean, yesterday. So we can talk about it? Yes. What's it called? It's Rakakamon? Or it's got yeah, a funny... It's some, yeah, like it. yeah, Dorothy shared that. I forgot the name. I was going to mention that to you because it just came, it just came out like, oh, we can talk about this now. Yeah, it's called... It's called Rilla Rilla Kuma theme park adventure. Yes, yes, that's it. That's that's the one. Rilla Kuma theme park adventure. I think it's big in Italy. I'm not sure. And we dubbed it into English. And I play yeah. the park, the park adventure, park director at this amusement park. But so I did that a couple of months ago, and that's on Netflix now. Yep. So to give you an example, when I show up, I don't know what I'm doing, but <laughs> Wendy Lee knows she cast me already. So she's like, well, here's the part. Look at it. So I see it. <laughs> And you, you know, you see the character and you start playing around with the voice and it's not long, it doesn't take long. It's only maybe two to three, four minutes and right, I get right. something and she's like, yeah, that's it right there. Stay right there, that's the voice. And then we start going, you know, so. Yeah, and speaking of character voices, um, besides Agumon, you had like two like recurring parts called, a character called Digmon. It was basically you doing like a Southern accent, like Digmon. Well, it was Digmon, <laughs> Stephen, it Digmon. <laughs> Well, now <laughs> there we go. That's it. That's it. Yeah, whatever. Also... I mean, I'm a fool. Yeah, Stephen, I'm a fool because I'm an actor. <laughs> Actors are fools. They're yeah, children. They don't want to grow up. They just want to play. And when you go, you know, years ago, I'll tell you this. You'll love this. Mm -hmm. I had a. I got cast. So lucky. I got. Well, I, I'll let me back it up. Do you remember this thing on the Cartoon Network called What a Cartoon? Yes. Yes. They I were did. like. They were like original pilots. Mm -hmm. And out, yeah. of, mm -hmm. out of that came Dexter's Laboratory and mm -hmm. the Pow Powder Puff Girls right. and Johnny Bravo, right? So I did a pilot for the Cartoon Network called The Boyd and the Worm, The Bird and the Worm, but it was Brooklyn, The Boyd and the Worm. And it only, only yeah. did one episode. It didn't go yeah. as a series, it, right? But it, it's very it funny, and it's playing on YouTube now, 24-7. <laughs> right. Anyway, so I'm on it, and I go to the thing. I'm cast in it. And uh, Chris Zimmerman is the casting oh. lady. She's very wonderful. She does Scooby-Doo, and I work with her later on a video game. She is. She hears me, and she goes, okay, you're very good. You're very funny. You're at a five right now. This is real animation. You got to come up to 10. So me, you see how big I am, how animated I am as a person. Right, right. <laughs> so I wasn't big enough for that. So you had to go, okay. So, you know, it was like, it was the bird and the worm. I had this song, this song. Um, she'll, she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. Anyway, you have to check it out. Everyone, the bird and the worm, the boy right, yeah, and I the remember, worm. I remember, I remember the name popping up a couple of times back in the day. It's so right. long ago because it's like right. when they do these pilot shows, they never get picked up. Right. It can, but, it you know, the thing of it is, is that I recorded that uh, at the, the old Cartoon Network building, which was the Hanna-Barbera building on Coenga Boulevard West. And I was in the same studio because I mm -hmm. asked what was done here. And they go, oh, everything. The Flintstones. Mm -hmm. The Flintstones were recorded here, um, the Jetsons. <laughs> so it was really kind of amazing. That was very exciting. Yeah. And when yeah. I went to the screening, uh, either Joseph Hanna or uh, William Barber, there was one of them was sitting behind me. They were like in their 80s and they were these oh, wow, that's, animation that's legends. Anyway, yeah, right, right, that was a very right. fun experience. But the reason I told you that is because they were saying you have to be even bigger for real animation, even give even more you know so, so right it's like right. the it's the loony bin it's some kind of therapy for actors to go in a voiceover booth you know yeah it's amazing and that and your sister melissa she transitioned well so much into original animation western animation too she done like a lot of other bigger and roles she does within. invader zim and mm -hmm. a lot of really good things yeah 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 and i and it it takes me a good while to when i first heard melissa sing on a digimon role that all, all all members of your family are very musically inclined. Y'all great musicians. 
to your own instead, you know what I mean? It's yeah, just, well, our dad really was amazing. a wonderful uh, drummer. And at one point he wanted like a whole music family. So my older brother played trombone and I played terrible clarinet, but I, mm -hmm. I, I like to keep playing because the girls were pretty in the band. And uh, Jonathan, my brother played good trumpet and my little sister played good flute for a while. So my dad wanted like a little band, but now years later, we're all very musical. We were raised on jazz. That was the first music we heard. And even Dorothy and my sister, yeah. Jenny, oh, yeah. they're all wonderful singers. And, and Melissa, yeah, wonderful singer. She was on Broadway, original cast of Wicked, you know, yeah. And I'm going, I'm we all do, we all do what, what we, yeah. what we can do you know i mean we all yeah oh yeah we all have this ability and we're just it's it's kind of like the family business we do what we can you know yeah and i want to um backtrack to digimon real quick you played this character called samarimon you did it was like another thing of digmon but you used like a different voice the first time i guess this is one of the time either jeff or bob buckles actually used to use the same voice for digmon for this character was it kind of like a low was it like a hey, like a kind of down here um i guess i could play it for you a little bit so it might sound yeah, like yeah because i don't remember it so go ahead play it okay <laughs> So much for my idea oh, the there we go. Wow, a submarine. What perfect timing. I'm using Marimon. I digivolve using the digi egg of reliability. My oxygen torpedo attack makes my enemies truly seasick. <laughs> All right, everyone. That's me? Truly seasick. That's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a long time ago, man. Yeah. See, you, you guys, you fans, you, Steven, you legend of Philadelphia, you know <laughs> more than me. Because I just yeah. did it, and I don't remember it, but you you guys remember. You guys are great. Yeah, and, and the one thing, and I could tell, like, you guys, a lot of you actors that worked on the Digimon series, y'all put, put a lot of, um, y'all take a lot from your personal lives or from your background, so, such as your New York roots, you take in and put into these roles, and you did. Yeah, well, being from New York, I mean, uh, <laughs> I moved when I was 15, so... I still have the New York accent yeah, you do. and my little brother and my little sister don't have it as much, but they can turn it on if they need to. Right. But uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of times I might be hindered by maybe they'll, they'll say less, yeah. less uh, New York or less regional. They'll, they'll try and be polite. They'll go less regional, Tom. I go, are you saying less <laughs> New York? You know. Yeah. And, and speaking of on your New York background, you also played a, another character on Digimon called Datamon. You, Something inspired you to use some kind of New York, uh, fancy New York accent, but more of like a salesman type. You, uh, I'll play another sample again. Uh, <laughs> I love that you have it. The truth is the greatest treasure. No. Uh, oh, oh, go on, take it. That's you. You know, at first I just thought you were making up stories because you wanted these things so badly, but you truly deserve to have them. But uh, don't tell anyone I've gone soft, okay? Huh? <laughs> hey, don't tell anyone I've gone soft, okay? Uh, you <laughs> truly deserve to have them, okay, Stephen? Hey, <laughs> don't name Mr. Philly Cheese. That's great. I haven't heard that in a hundred years. That's hilarious. Yeah, th th that was uh, back when Mary was directing you guys. I like, this one time where she asked you to come in and do this part because she knows you guys will do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really wonderful to be in something where they have so many parts to cast. And right. so if they give us a couple, you know, you, we can show a little bit of versatility. I once worked for Ezra. Do you know Ezra? Ezra, Ezra. Weiss? Yeah, he's yeah, so yeah, wonderful. We, yeah. He's so wonderful. I worked for him on something. I'm trying to remember. It's all these African, all these, it's in a jungle. I think it's jungles in the title. Uh, it was all these different animals. And I had a yeah, session. Yeah, I think, yeah, you play the creature. I, 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 remember, I know what you're talking about. I, I was looking through, I was looking through, um, I was jungle researching something. You. But I yeah, once I had a session where they had like maybe six different parts and I did like six parts in an hour and a half and I, I, was, I was ready to take a nap afterwards, but every <laughs> one of them was different. Uh, you know, the bottom line for me, Stephen, is to leave it in the booth. Right. I truly do. I mean, I give everything I can. And right. then I, when I'm done, I, I don't even remember sometimes. So that, you yeah. Know, because the most important part to you is that you give it your best shot. And you know, yeah. the director will see it, you'll see it, and then eventually you'll yeah. be thinking about it. Well, but. an actor has to, that's, look, I, I don't know what other people's definition of being an actor is, but, you know, it right. doesn't matter how I'm feeling in my life. It doesn't matter what's going on with my life. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter anything. If I'm hired to do something, I got to show up and put, do my best. put all that out of, and just what do I have to do? What's the script? What do I have to do? And then I'm done, you know? Yeah. Right. And it is, and you do 
such an amazing job with what you've done. And it's just amazing that I hear your voice like popped out in various anime and even animated films like Ice Age 2. Now, how uh, Ice Age those- 2 was a was a big, I went to my agent. I, I remember someone saying to me, how did you ever get that part? And I'm like, what do you mean? I, he goes, how'd you do it? I go, I just went to my agent and I read for it. And they go, yeah, it's rare that that happens because they right. use a lot of celebrities. Right. And they use a lot of people that they, mm-hmm. you know, the anime field is one thing. And then the to get in a feature, Ice Age 2. I mean, that was a big deal for me. Right, right. I went to my agent, I read for some parts, I got a call back and then I booked the thing. I parked my car, I'm walking mm-hmm. into the studio and Ray Romano is coming out of the studio. And wow. I go, hi Ray. He goes, hi, how are you? So then I'm like, wow, this is gonna be special. So I go into this booth and in the booth I hear, I believe Carlos, the director of the first couple of Ice Age movies, he's brilliant. And I think he was in Brazil. And then someone is right there. And so I did two parts. Uh, one, I play Stu the turtle. In the first yeah. 10 minutes of the movie, Jay Leno is drowning this turtle. And he yeah. has these, these uh, like straws in his yeah. nose. And you, and you hear him say, I can smell the ocean. No, so that's, Stu. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's Stu. And then an hour later, there's these two oxes. They're walking. Yeah. And yeah. Jay Leno, again, comes up to my wife, Ox, and says, you're kind of fat. How'd you like to lose weight? And she goes, oh, I never. And then I say, <laughs> don't pay any attention to him, Vera. You're as thin as a twig. <laughs> and, Two and he lines. Had like this, yeah, like this fancy and, uh, hair, this Ox. Yeah, I remember that. Bro. It was so funny. I can't believe people remember that. They asked me about it at conventions. And, you That's know, I was amazing. thrilled to be part of that. You know, I mean, when you do that, yeah, you know, I, I'm going to let you know, and I know you know, I want your fans to know, whoever's watching this, the difference between anime and real animation or, or, or live animation. Anime, you're dubbing something. So you're watching the screen. You're watching something that's already been produced, already been animated, and they take the audio out, and you have to go line by line, right, to get it in. In live animation, uh, real animation, there's nothing. You're just reading the script and they're going to animate to me. They're going to animate Stu the turtle to my smell the ocean. You know, they're going to put it to me. It even looks a little bit like me if you see it next time. Right. But, um, <laughs> and so it's more, I think it's more freeing. Yeah, it does. Because you you're, you're not to do all your acting kinks. For an actor to find some kind of acting creative freedom right, in right. dubbing, it's difficult. But but we've we've learned how to do it after so long, you know. Right, and it's just you know original. Good animation. question, Stephen. Very good. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, Billy Cheese just, making it happen. Very good. Yeah, and I, I, I want to backtrack to Saban. Uh, yeah, a little bit back. Flint, Flint the Time Detective. You play this. You play like a fictional version of Mozart, the musician, the famed musician Mozart. Now, is that me or is that my brother Jonathan? Because uh, I know, know Jonathan I, also worked on Flint. Yeah, he Time. worked on it. Um, your sister Melissa worked on it too. A lot. A lot of you guys. You know, like I said, it's a it's a small group of actors, but right, right. It's, it's a lot of you guys. Y'all did so so much amazing work and. I, it could it could have been Jonathan because there was one time somebody mistake miscredit you for a role that Jonathan did and whatnot. I'm like, I know I, he he's I feel bad for him. He he yeah. uh, he gets uh, uh, disrespected sometimes. He said I think like on Naruto, right? He he has a lead role in that for many years. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Sh- Sh- Shikaku. Shikaku Nara. That's yeah. Jonathan. Um, That's not me. Right, um, but I played some other parts, but I don't really. Yeah, I don't yeah, remember. Played, yeah, this is like again, this is one of the times where Mary knows you guys so well that she just call you up and like, "Hey, Tom, how does rope? Just come into Studioopolis at this one studio room and just do your thing." <laughs> yeah, that's basically the way it went, you know. But I unfortunately they asked me at conventions about Naruto and Bleach, and I played yeah. a bunch of things, but I. I don't specifically remember them. I need to bring you to the conventions with your little tape deck or whatever you have there. And then yeah. you play the audio, you know. I had a guy come up to me at a convention and go, dude, you're on One Punch Man. And I'm <laughs> like, no, I, I don't think I am. They're like, bro, you are. You're Croblante. You're like a great guy. I go, no, I don't think. He goes, bro. And then he played it. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I found a clip. It could, it's so, it's so, yeah, this is, this is definitely you. I remember now. Well, of course I do. Ah, I see. You're afraid of 
my new invention. Just what invention are you talking about, mister? <laughs> a new kind of energy I call electricity. Oh, yeah, that's me. A new yeah. kind of invention I call electricity. <laughs> Yeah, this, that's it me. was a Mozart. It was another role, a guest role that Michael Sir just had you in and do it. Yeah, that's, that mean. sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and speaking of moving on, several years later, around the time you did your Ice Age 2 thing, when did you get, collaborate with the um, company called Studiopolis? Because I know you know Jane, Jamie Simone for a while, too, back in the, the one, Bond day. Like Everybody knows everyone. And yeah. <laughs> there's a wonderful, one of the nicest, sweetest, persons in the business is Rita, Rita Acosta. Mm -hmm. uh, and she has worked, she goes all the way back to Honey Bee yeah. Hutch. Yeah, and she then does. she goes through Digimon, I believe. And then mm -hmm. all the way, she's still been uh, wherever Jamie is at Studiopolis. So she yeah. is a lovely, kind, wonderful person. And she knows all the fawns and we've known her for a long time. And so uh, Jamie, Jamie is, is a great guy to work for. Sometimes you'll work for him and then you won't see him again for a couple of years and then you're back. But, you know, <laughs> but uh, that's just the way it is in the business. Right. And uh, he's a he's a great guy to work for. He has, does a lot of great work out of Studiopolis. They have a couple of studios. Yeah. Yeah. They, I did I the new like Digimons. One. I did the new Digimons out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Up to yep. Digimon Try. Right. I did uh, the COVID hit on Friday, March 13th, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, 2020. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a voiceover session, the last Digimon session for Agumon on that Monday, 13, 14, 15, 16, March 16th at yeah, Studiopolis. Right. And that's where they filmed, if you watch the last one, Last yep, Evolution. They, there's a nice behind the scenes extra thing. You yeah, I've watch. seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. And that was the only one that was ever done to me. And I was really good. And I've had people say to me at conventions, how do you feel? that someone else is playing Agumon now because you know they recast everything right. and I said first of all I don't it's so hard to be an actor to right. get work so I don't begrudge anyone right. to exactly. get work. and also is it really the last time I'll ever do Agumon I mean right. really, we, we I, don't know I mean look who at knows try. who like, knows try. The try I movie. didn't think I was ever going to do right uh, those try films so whatever happens happens but I'm I'm happy I just keep when the phone rings I answer it and I go to the session. I'm very easy, Stephen. I don't I don't <laughs> overanalyze it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there was one. There was one story. This is go way back in the day, back in the early 2000s. There was one time where you was coming in for a Digimon session. Um, Jeff was directing at the time. You was trying to rush to the st studio, trying to make it for your time for your session. And then you was is this the sandwich? And then Jeff was waiting for you. Like, can I get a sandwich? <laughs> Who told you that? Did he tell you that? Yeah, yeah, he shared this. He shared this with a previous interviewer. Right? Somebody interviewed him. He shared that this is a true. That is a complete true story. <laughs> I was running around and didn't leave enough. I'm I'm much better now. I was running around and didn't leave. Here's my message to you all: Make sure you eat something during the day. <laughs> you can't go up to a voiceover session and not have eaten yet. But that's because I became good friends with Jeff, and I think I was possibly taking advantage of that like can we just start can we just start at i know it's one o'clock let's start at 105 let me get a sandwich you know so it was, that's of course not the professional way to be you know so right and I speaking, of, for that. speaking of food you also um voice agumon and digimon for the digimon movie Did, was yeah. there any kind of craft service servicemanship going on during the session or you know i, I don't like, think so I, you know on those like uh I think I might have done those while you know, like you do the TV show, you'd be done. Sometimes you have a two hour session. Right. And if you're done quickly, then they go, OK, now we're going to do this. The movie. I don't, I don't even know if I had a set. I must have had a separate session for the movie, but I don't remember. I do remember uh, some fun things happening. You know, when we go in the studio, Stephen, from Philadelphia, we don't yeah. know what's going on with Digimon. We don't know that the world the nation, everyone's starting to love it. We don't know how popular it's getting. Right. Two thing, two things happened. One, mm -hmm. my cousin Heidi called me from New York and said, oh, I just bought the Agumon toy at Toys R Us. And I'm like, what? Excuse me? I'm like, yeah, the Agumon toy. We just bought it. I'm like, first of all, I didn't know there was a toy. And secondly, I can't believe the show's so popular. So then what they had done, I don't want to say this in a bad way, but I'm just going to yeah. say it. They had just put, they had taken our voices and put them in toys and put them out on the wow, Toys R Us. Wow, that's amazing. And had not told the actors or people. Oh. 
So what we did is we got our agents and managers involved and we took care of business, if you know what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, exactly. You exactly. got to pay to play, exactly. right? I understand and then that. the other thing is I'm doing Digimon, Agamon, and all of a sudden they go, tomorrow you have to go to 20th Century Fox and record a TV commercial. I'm like, what's this for? And they go, I don't know. And I go and Agumon was on a float in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Wow. And they wanted me to do the VO. And it went, if I remember, it went like, I'm Agumon. I'll be in the Thanksgiving parade tomorrow. Make sure you watch Pepper Breath. Oh, that's cool. Is that cool? Yeah, that is cool. It's like, you know, and speaking of Agumon, because I know that's your it's your it's your lead, it's another lead role for you after doing a show from Geiger. So it, I know it me really means much to you. And the fact that there would be times where folks, talent, talented, great folks like Mary called, I think you did Agumon for various video games too, like Right, that's right. Digimon Rumble Arena. This is where Mary was directing. And then a couple of years later, Bob Buckles calls you in to do Agumon. And you did a character. You did. You also did another character called Agunimon. It sounded. It it, it got that. It, it, sound, it sounds. Um, I, I I got a clip of you sounding like very suave, and it's fu it's funny because I'm like. Oh. Is that Let me hear what I did. This is good. I, I'm glad you're giving me all this. Yeah, because you like to. Because I don't remember it. Uh, let me uh, play because it's it's kind of like uh, let me find play it. it for me, and then I'll ask you where's the oh, best Philly cheese steak. Here it is. Now that was Dan Lorger doing the pyro. So let me go back to uh, that clip. You sound. It, You're it was definitely I can't you. believe you know Dan's voice too. That's fantastic. Yeah, he did a character called Burning Greymon, and you did you you were digivolving and say you said a Gunimon digivolve too, and then Dan Lord J say Burning Greymon. That's fantastic. So I'm gonna tell uh, him that you were mentioning him today. <laughs> let me find. I just gotta scroll in so much, so much, so much. Where is it? Okay, here we go. Take me, I'm sorry, I'm taking so much time. It's all right. Go back right here. There it is. Here we go. Here it is. <laughs> Digivolve too. So it's kind of a variation on the Digimon. Well, Stephen, let me ask you a very important question. Are you ready? Sure. Yeah. Where's the best Philly cheesesteak in Philadelphia? Go. Ooh, <clears throat> Gino's Palace yeah, down in South is, Philly. It's either, what is it? Either Pat's or Gino's, right? Yeah, Pat's. Yeah, I, I say Gino's. I like Gino's. And it's because of the cheese, right? Isn't it? Yeah, something? yeah. Because the cheese is the cheese whiz or an actual cheese? It's actual cheese. Oh, there we go. So Gino's, yeah. good to know. All yeah. right, keep going. How much time do <laughs> we got left? Give me, give me more questions, buddy. I don't want okay, you to. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Um, I don't want I, you to not ask what you want to yeah, ask. Yeah, back Go on ahead. Digimon. Um, do you remember doing the Agumon session at Bang Zoom in Bang Zoom Studio? And uh, but yeah. this time, I think you, I think you were having like a. It was one of those times where you know, if you're having some kind of illness or a cold, you still mm -hmm. gotta come in and do the um acting and you know try to. All I remember is uh, one time uh, I hadn't done it in a long time. Agumon. Okay. So they they. They played me the reference. This was maybe right. the first time in about 10 years. And right. I was like, I'm going to need some more water because I had gotten older and I got to oh. make sure, you know, with Agumon, you got to make sure you go up there. You almost got right. to get, you got to get kicked in the nuts because, <laughs> you know, you got to hear it. Steven, <laughs> how's it going? Yeah, because it was sounded like, it, it sounded, I mean, I don't want to say it sounded like Agumon was like definitely hurt or like or depressed a little bit. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Okay, here so it is. In, in your opinion, you you think I sound a little like Agumon with a cold on one of them? Yeah, it's like it's like this a little bit. So here, there it is. Like fire blast. Like is it <laughs> like it was like it wasn't as high pitched, but it was more like grounded your, your your vocal work was more grounded at first they like that high energy well agumon started to change you know he started yeah. to become a little bit more serious and then you've right. got to find if you and i've established this high voice yeah hey, and then they want him to like kick butt like fight and it's it's hard to go like 
I'm going to kick your butt. I mean, when you're way up, you know, so right. I've had to do a couple of, they've really stretched the Agamon as far as I can go with it. You right. Know? But you still know it's me though. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's definitely you. And speaking of which, um, I think one of your first time you did Agumon was back in when Studio Oculus were first be beginning the thing. This is one of the times where Jeff asked you to come in and do Agumon again. Um, this was like back in 2005, around the summertime. Wow. Okay. Uh, 2005? Yeah, it, okay. was for another, it was for another Digimon movie. Like Jeff Nimoy was directing, he written it. He had, had a lot of you guys coming back for these roles. Like Jeff, um, him, you, uh, oof. Colette? Yeah, come back for Agumon. You came back for Agumon. But I mean Colette, like Colette Sunderman, wasn't she on him too? Um, I forgot. No. Because I remember it was this one time where where Studiopolis, like Jamie Simone just asked Jeff to come and do it, and then Rita Mash Cut, she was the producer. Right, Rita, was, she's so great. Yeah, it was like one of those times where you just it was a quick Agumon switch, and he was like a one and done, and of course, you know, you move on, you know what I mean? Right, I exactly. Well, and I'm then, happy to do Agumon whenever they ask. I'm happy to get work whenever <laughs> they, you know. I just work then, for Wendy Lee, like I told you, and and also I'm on this, uh, Dorothy said I can say it now. Uh, Dorothy's been on Fire Emblem, but I was on Fire Emblem. Uh, oh, were you? Movie. It's called Fire Emblem Heroes. Oh, wow, you know what? She did mention that you were on there. I, I think I overlooked it. Wow, it's that's Oh, they're coming to get us. Uh, it's a brand new Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem Heroes. I don't know what's happening outside. Let's give it a minute. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. Because that's, that's amazing because, and I know, you know, with Studio Oculus, I know Jeff, no, there's this one role where Jeff specifically wanted you and your brother Jonathan to do. You, you did a, a trio of Demi Devimon. Oh. Jeff Nimoy was the lead Devimon. You and your brother were the backup Devimon. Like, yes, master. Oh, I love that. that you know, it sounds familiar. Yeah, I think yeah, I it was like, that. yeah. It was like another version of Digimon where they had another Agumon. And this right. was the time where Jeff tried to fight for you to be this Agumon. But, right. you know, they choose somebody else. It happens in the business. I know, he's, he's very good to us. And he just recommended us. We did a signing. We did an online signing for a company called uh, uh, Streamily. Yeah, streamingly, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. guys. I think you might have watched us on Instagram like a week, but he but he he got like a bunch of Digimon people together. We weren't together, Dorothy and I were together, but all I right. still think a bunch of Digimon cast members should be going all around the country doing conventions, like a bunch of us together. I've been yeah, I've been pushing that for so many years. I have been requesting Maybe you, names, you write, like, send an email. Here's a, here's the sending sending email to the to the people at the Philadelphia. Yeah, convention. I've been doing that too. So it's like yeah, keep going. Like, more questions. Come on, keep going. Yeah, because like so many lead Digimon roles, like you played Agumon, Derek Stephen Prince played Demon, Steve Bloom with Gilmon, and Brian. It's funny. Bloom. I know. I know Stephen. I know Derek Stephen Prince as Steve yeah. Prince. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Prince. Know he, so, and he interviewed Dorothy and I, and I said, when did you add yeah. this extra name? I said, now you have to call me Derek Tom Fawn. So it was <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a fun, I like how you guys do, do those kinks and tricks and, you know, create a process with your vo vocal and, you know, do yeah. these characters. It's like what, you know, when Derek played, he, well, he played a lot of manic roles and it's so entertaining to hear him perform like that. Compared to you, when you do like the more character voice or you do the more authentic humanity type roles like show from Guyver, and that's still, right. I keep going back to Guyver because that's yeah. still my favorite role. That's still, still one of my favorite roles you've done in your career because well, that's so great. And that was one, that was my first one. And, mm -hmm. and we recorded, we used to record in this place called The Cave. I don't know if anyone's told you about it. The yeah. Cave was before uh, Magnitude 8. And right, the right. cave literally was a cave voiceover studio mm -hmm. and they didn't know how to really record us. So they recorded us all together and you can't oh, have no. actors in the same room together because all the audio bleeds over. So those first Guyvers, uh, right. I don't know how good they sound, but yeah. uh, we, we got going though. Yeah. But how about Guyvers a... death show? How about his death? <laughs> Scream my lungs out. I'm still hurt, I think. Yeah, that's just, it's just, you know, with shows like Guyver, Digimon, Naruto, Bleach, I mean. Even you're a good interviewer, man. 
Oh, thank you. I, I really appreciate that, Tom. Now, I try to give you actors the more leeway to share more about you. I give you guys the spotlight for sure because you yeah. wholeheartedly deserve it because of all the work, the passion you put into these roles, no matter if it's not going on air, if, if it's not as popular as many other shows. Well, the thing of it is, is I only know how to do job. it. I only know how to do it one way. I, I only yeah. know how to, <laughs> to give 100%. I don't, I don't know how to, I just give it the best I can and then that's that. And then here you we are talking enough. about it. So that's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it this is icing point. on the cake. Dorothy and I always can't believe that anyone knows who we are and wants to talk to us because after we leave the booth, you know, we go right. on to the next thing. But you guys are the people out there watching the stuff and you're right. liking the stuff, you know, so <laughs> it's great. Yeah, and going back on Digimon, do you remember, this is like probably a couple of years ago, it's, it's recent, but probably around like 2015, 2016. Did they, do, you, do you remember coming in for... A Digimon session where they had you did Agumon, Greymon, Metal Greymon, and War Greymon. Yeah, maybe. Uh, was it a video game? Yes, it was a video game for sure. I think they had to walk me through each one. Yeah. Because Agumon, I know. The other ones, I don't really know. Yeah, and yeah. I, I mean, I don't remember. So I had to give it. I, but I did, did I play those parts yeah, on the show um, 20 years it, earlier? Yeah, there was a clip of a fan posted this on YouTube where you did. Um, you did the voice. Um, let me see if I can find it. Cause you were like, Agumon, you, Digimon, you fans know everything. Yeah, they do. Well, I've got a recording of you, Stephen. <laughs> and here's the voice you're doing right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot the I forgot the name of a um. I think it's called Digimon Rear Rear Rise, and it's like, hold on, let me find. It. I think I remember watch. I should have pulled it up beforehand. It's all right. I think here it is. Keep me posted on questions and, and our time, okay? Okay. Yep, yep. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, right. um, yep. Here it is. Sorry, it's, it's a long, it's a long process. Right. Metal, Greymon. Metal just, Greymon. Yeah, that was you just sounding cool, you know, like the cool type. Metal voice. Greymon. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, what you do it is you do it until they love it. You know, the, you got a director there, and sometimes it's Susie. I don't know if you don't know about Susie. Yeah, Susie, Suzanne Goldish. Yeah, she directed she's, you in the last Digimon she is movie. Fantastic. She's a yeah, director she and the engineer. So yeah, she's she did. Doing, yeah, she she's doing the Pro Tools and directing. But at this point, she figures everyone knows their characters. You know, Joshua mm -hmm. Seth knows Ty. I know Agumon. And yeah. a little uh, fact for the fans, Joshua and I are never in the same room together. Right, he records right. his stuff, and then I'm, I hear it, and I'm doing it. I'm losing the light here. Where's the sunshine on the beach? Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Susie's great. And I think on those, I just, you know, she goes, give me three in a row. You know, Metal Greymon, yeah. Metal Greymon, Metal Greymon, you know, and she takes the one that she's, you know, there was another director along the way too. Uh, Ryan Johnston. Ryan, that's right. Very nice yeah. guy. Very young guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's I think... tough to walk into these sessions <laughs> and not see Jeff Nimoy. Yeah. Or, he... or Wendy Lee or Mary Elizabeth, the people who, you know, Nimoy, Jeff Nimoy wrote everything back in the day. So, right. Yeah. But it's all, it's all Digimon, so. Yeah, but actually, he did write. He did wrote for the last movie. So all the lines you did for your your last Agumon session, you did for that movie. He wrote that. Jeff definitely. Oh, that's wrote fantastic. That. I'll have to talk to him about that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I actually watched that one. I I watched the Digimon movie. I had never seen it, and I watched the last one, Last Evolution, back yeah. to back about a year ago. Dorothy and I here. I had never really, you know, I don't know if you guys know, we don't really, I don't really watch the show. Right. So to watch it, I was like, I didn't think I was in the Digimon movie much, but I am in the beginning. And then it, he's kind of gone for later on. Dorothy always plays Ty's mom, which just cracks me up. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Would you care for a liver shake? You know, she's yeah. pretty funny. And then yeah, the last it, one, it was kind of got me a little sad, you know, kind of. Yeah, it, yeah, this, yeah. I did, I did cry at the end when Agumon and Gabumon had to go by because, and, and that was you, that's like, I'm not sure what part when you did that scene, but you did a fantastic. Uh, we did it in we did it in in uh, in order in in order. We did it in you know we okay. went from the beginning to the end. Yeah. 
Cool. Yeah, because I know because I know there's like a whole transition. If you had to do like grunt sounds or fighting combat sounds or something like that, they would say that all the way to the end. Yeah, look at you. You know the way. You should be a director or something, <laughs> a producer, yeah, or, or I maybe did, just I'll, a. <laughs> I know I need I know I need a lot of training to do so. Yeah. You know, and it's well, never too late, man. You're right. There's actually a scene where your wife, um, here it is. Hey mom. Is Agumon okay? <laughs> Are you more worried about Agumon or me? I know you're gonna be alright. <laughs> oh, I see how it is. You take care of your little sister and Agumon and Gatumon too, okay? <laughs> That's Dorothy and Joshua. Yeah. <laughs> I have to play. I got you. I got time for like a couple more questions, and then I okay. I gotta Actually, go, this brother. Is like, this is my final question to ask you. So, as a veteran actor that's been in the business for over forty years now, wow. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to do the math in my head. So, what can you take, and what could, what advice can you give to like act, people that want to become actors in general? Because I know it's a highly competitive competitive field for you guys and it still is even you steven you nice young philly cheese from philadelphia <laughs> um only do it if you love it you have exactly. to love it i mean you have it's like anything a baseball player only wants to play ball because he he can't not play you know i mean uh only do the thing whatever your thing is whatever the passion is it doesn't even have to be an actor but for us, I mean, and for me personally, I mean, I just couldn't do anything else and I can't seem to walk away from it. So it's, you know, I, I'm still at it. And and it's it's uh, it's just what we know how to do. Like, I don't know what kind of day, like I said earlier, I could be in traffic here in L.A., which which is stressful, or I could be doing this, doing that. But once I get into the voiceover booth, I know what to do when I'm in there. And I don't mind being stretched to play uh a part I wouldn't normally play or right, this and right. that, but, but we basically, you know, actors know how to act and all actors want to do is to act. You know, it, you it's know getting the, it's getting the work. That's the hard part. Cause there's thousands, thousands of actors in LA, man. And it's amazing. And it's such a huge coincidence, but not such a coincidence altogether because that's how exactly how I feel when I practice my karate, my martial arts, because what I've been going through before I hit the dojo, you know, yeah. I keep yeah. it out there and focus on perform practicing my martial arts and make sure I oh. get better at it each day as I'm doing it. You know what I mean? You're practicing. You, also you, having you a good focusing time on what too. you have to do when you mm -hmm. get in there, and and you also uh, feel maybe more comfortable uh, doing that, and and it's like a relief. You know, I think there is some kind of therapy for actors to go in a voiceover booth. You know, I mean, oh, yeah. I, I was on. Uh, I'll tell you this real quick. I was on God of War. And I played oh, like a, oh, nice. a zombie voice. And that's about <laughs> as far from Agumon as you can get. Oh, yeah. and, I, and I think my whole voice was like, I think we made up a language. So I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, you know, and then you come home and you're your wife and your daughter like, oh, what did you do today, daddy? Oh, I did this. <laughs> you know, so it's insane. I mean, show business is insane. And if you yeah. can make a buck in it, then fantastic. And if you just... Do it because you love it. That's mm -hmm. fantastic too, you know. And the good thing, and I should bring up um, Bob Klein again. He says so many good things about you and your brother Jonathan because <laughs> there was one time where you guys, since y'all both got Jewish background, y'all get together and y'all be rambling and do your thing. Well, we're you know? just a bunch of crazy. You know, I'm half Jewish and half Italian Catholic, yeah. so I have mm -hmm. twice the guilt as the normal. Person. <laughs> anyway, uh, but when we get together with Bob Klein, we're all originally from New York, so you mm -hmm. know, we get Chinese food and we have a lot of laughs. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Nimoy is from Brooklyn. I mean, there's a lot of New York characters. Yeah, Michael Sorge is Greek. I mean, Greek is as good as being Jewish or Italian or anything. I mean, it's just it doesn't matter what you are. Actors, like I said earlier, are children and they want to play. And it's playtime, you know, and uh, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy you wanted to talk to me, Stephen, you know, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm really beyond privileged that we, we were able to do this, Tom. I'm, I'm That's really, great. Uh, I That's really great. had a great time. You made me laugh so hard, like Bob Klein, because when I first interviewed Bob Klein, I was definitely nervous. I didn't know how it was going to go because Bob he Klein, he's crazy. <laughs> he's all that you know. He made, he made me laugh so hard for a good while it was like one of those days where i needed the good laugh especially That's when great. with all the work he done in his career yeah. and i'm glad you guys are so close to each other as friends and fellow yeah. 
business, you know, when this we don't see each other as much. I mean, COVID mm -hmm. made everyone right, create right. their own voiceover booths at home, but there are sessions happening and, you know, we've all been, we've had Zooms and, you know, I'm happy that you're a fan and I'm happy you know so much and you'll write the Tom Fawn book one day. I so. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thanks Tom. for playing all those little clips. I hadn't heard a lot of those in a long time. Man. Yeah, because I, I should have been doing it sooner because, it, you know, because I know when you come back and do a character and you haven't done it for a while and you forgot the voice, the director usually play like a little reference to get you back into the voice. <laughs> You're exactly right. And I definitely forget. I mean, I forget right when I leave the room. I mean, I, when I leave the booth, yeah. I'm, I don't remember. So they, they have to play the reference. Yeah. But I'm so happy you're a fan and keep enjoying the anime and everything. And uh, it was it was great to talk to you. God bless you and your life and your family, man. Thank you so much, Tom. And hopefully in the near future, I will see you in a future con somewhere in the future. And you. Yeah, yeah if we come to Philadelphia, you have to come meet uh, Dorothy and I. Absolutely. You know what? I'll make that a promise, Tom. I will definitely meet you, Dorothy. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. coming by Philly. I will definitely. Set well, we'll keep up. Off. I got your email. We'll keep up with each other. OK. All right. You take and care. This was a lot of fun, man. Thank you so much. You have Stay a great Stay safe, OK? Weekend. You All too. Right, take it easy. See you take later, care, man. Tom. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, okay. Uh, stop it. Sorry. <laughs> Try this. <laughs> very nice. He's a nice guy. Take care, Tom. Thank See you, man. Buddy.